All right. Okay. So, um, does anyone here not know who Joel uh, Dunlap is? Lucy, you don't know. Anyone else? Got to say, because I can't see all the places. Kim, you don't know? All right. Okay. So, um, if David Doyle, who's there, sits on the right hand of God, um, Joel either is God or sits on the left or sometimes shifts, you know, in between. Maybe she is also David Doyle. We don't know. Um, but I'll just do a quick intro. Um, I met uh, I met Joel um, at one of the first ever trainings we did in Horseboy Method back in 1652 or something, um, more or less when the Spanish quit the Netherlands and um, uh, just around the time the Portuguese colonized the Cape of Good Hope. Mm -hmm. And um, just before lunch. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, she was a tough sell. <laughs> <laughs> she sat there um, <laughs> with her arms folded and her mouth turned down um, and was a bit of a poopy butt. And um, actually, I didn't really notice. She told me this after. So I was just so busy doing the training. Um, but she didn't much. She wasn't impressed um, until at a certain point she decided that maybe this horseboy thing had some legs. And then she went on to create. She was already doing a very... Um, a very successful program in Northern California of her own and still does. Um, Horseboy is only one of the things she does. Um, but she, called the Square Peg Foundation, but she went on to create, you know, one of the hallmark horseboy places um, that we hold up as a gold standard. Um, and uh, she's gone through, like all of us, you know, all kinds of challenges and each time has just come up swinging and gone on to strength after strength after strength, and now is really in a position to mentor um, people, particularly those of you who are setting places up or want to expand your programs or grow your programs. She now has other locations. Um, so I think with that, Joelle, you take over. Um, so yeah, I, I was an absolute poopy butt um in that first training um but uh but i find that um uh sometimes when i am uh <laughs> most judgmental is is when i'm i'm really exercising um a lot of discernment and uh and i think the main thing with horse boy was was just not feeling alone you know i'd been doing square peg since 2004 and uh and it, and it was a pretty lonely space um so because we started square peg in 2004 um by the time we got to 2010 11 12 we found that uh, families that were bringing their kids to us were starting to age out of services um as people were getting older um they're not just that cute little autistic kid that everybody wants to help. Um, now they're coming into adulthood and their needs were changing and their, their uh, resources were, were really drying up. And it really started when I had a, a parent come to me and she had gone into uh, an education plan meeting um, with her daughter who was turning 19. And they actually said to the family, they said, well, we've done everything we can for your daughter and she's proven to us that she cannot learn. And the only, adopt uh, the only option um, for her is adult daycare. And, um, and obviously this, this, this family was in a lot of pain hearing that. And, um, and I got really angry and I said, no, she has another option. She's just going to come to work for us. And, um, and the, the mother said, well, can we do that? And I said, I don't know, but, but it seems we have to. This is the place where she feels comfortable. This is the place where she, she um, th that feels like home and there's lots of work to be done. Um, so that's where we got started. And I think that was about um, probably 2012, 2013. So the bad news is, is this job training program took us years to build. 
Um, the good news is I made all the mistakes in the world and I'm more than happy to share all of those with you so that it's not going to take you nearly as time as much time to, to build these programs. Um, I then went on over COVID just because I was bored and um, I did a master certificate in autism support. And uh, what I have to share with you guys is actually um, my, uh, uh, my final project that I did for the program, which was a research paper and a theory of change model about building uh, a job training program. And the statistics are there, and I'm not even going to read them out to you because we're all working in this field and they're very depressing statistics. But suffice to say that nine out of 10 adults on the autism spectrum are either unemployed or underemployed. Um, the good news is uh, at Square Peg right now, as of last week, we had eight interns. I did the math just before this class, and uh, we have paid out um, now. I think $300,000 in wages um, to people on the spectrum. And um, as of this week, we now have uh, 11 interns, including um, our latest intern who um, is going to be fascinating. Not only is he on the spectrum, he's blind uh, and he's really engaged in, 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 in working at the farm. So we're super excited about that. So if I could, I thought I would run for you guys a little three minute video that was done that is a, a testimonial from a parent about what the, um, what the job training program has, has meant to them, if that's all right, that I can run that, yeah? No, we don't wanna see your fucking video, fuck off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well then I'm gonna go ride horses. <laughs> okay. Oh, Ileana oh, just reminded me that we wanted to make this YouTube friendly and I just said the F word twice. Yeah. Um, oh, well, it's early. It's able to yeah. share your screen. By the way, the whiteboard isn't working. It says I can't while other, while another participant is sharing. There's too much sharing going on, it says. Oh, because well, oh, that's not the right pen, that's why. Okay, so I think my whiteboard <laughs> isn't, well, oh, that's the right pen, okay. Rupert just drew with a regular pen on my computer. That's because that, that's the sort of <laughs> that's the sort of di disruptive. Um, as long as he doesn't put actual white out on the screen. Well, it's because she misses having toddlers in the house, so you know I'm trying to fulfil that role. Um, okay. Okay. Now, can she share her screen? Um, Do I no. have the option to share? No. It still says you can't okay. start you screen share while hours. other participants are sharing oh, hold on then we need to okay. stop sharing that one okay all right try now okay here we go da, da. okay we can't hear your audio at the moment or can you all really no can then, can you give a thumbs up if you can hear audio or shake your heads if you can't hear audio, chaps? No audio. No audio. No audio. And Robin just joined. Okay. Huh. Okay. Zoom's a little annoying because you have to pre-approve the audio prior to playing uh, it before you go live. Yeah. Really? Well, having learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> saying, saying who has to pre-approve it, Jay, uh, uh, Joel, or me? Do we need to uh, pre-approve it? No, I think that it's like it won't let you do it while the meeting's in progress. Uh, oh shoot! Uh, okay. Yeah, when you go to the share options, you have to. It says audio, and then it will like restart the thing to allow audio to share. That's been my experience anyway. Okay. Well, okay. We, we could um, stop it. By the way, while you guys, while we're just fiddling with that tech stuff, did you did you see that bird of prey um, flying in the original bit? Okay, so um, this that only only at Square Peg. Um, I <laughs> showed up there in 2021 to say hi, and just like, oh, you want to come help out on a play date? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And the play date is this. Um, autistic barely verbal 13 year old Ethiopian girl who's blind in one eye she's a ex-refugee 
the blindness they think comes from a blunt force trauma. Um, and um, this girl sort of with Joelle's magic fairy dust managed to find the confidence to become a licensed falconer. And that involved working under the, as an apprentice for a state recognized falconer for a year as a barely verbal autistic person. Um, then live capturing under supervision, her own red tailed hawk and training it and then presenting it and going through all the, the exams and all of this stuff and oral exams as well that they test you on. And like, she did the lot and um, then persuaded her mum to let her keep this bird of prey um, in her apartment <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and, and take wow. it out to be flown from horseback at Square Peg. The horse in question, I have to say, I'm rather proud, was one of our best horse boy horses, which when we moved from America, um, first went to Colorado and then um, ended up at Joel's um, because he had this terrible skin reaction to the Texas heat called Clue, who's a legendary horse boy horse who who um, stepped up to the plate. But really only at Joel's would you sort of, not only would you see something like that, but you go, oh yeah, yeah, well, of course I'm at Joel's. Of course I would see something like that, you know? Um, and uh, so that just is a testament to how exceptional the work is. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, but I still can't figure out the damn tech to run the video. So we can skip it <laughs> if you like. Is that all right? It's your gig, love. Yeah. So okay. tell us about you, it. Yeah. Can yeah. you send us the link later, maybe? Is it oh, right? absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Good idea, Carla. Thanks. And tell us what's going on. I could yeah. do. I could. Why don't you voice now. over it? Yeah, let's do it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want it in a okay. reggae style. In a reggae style. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you have to deliver the backbeat. Yeah. So uh, you beatbox it. Okay. Hold on. Jara Safari tell us. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh shoot. Okay. Go back to the beginning, Joe. Oh, sorry. It's all right. We know it's worth it. Okay. So obviously that's Muddy the Hawk. Um, so this is the young man we're talking about. And he, um, he was deemed um, violent and dangerous. And he also <laughs> exposed himself pretty regularly. Um, he has been working for us a little over a year now. Um, and his whole life has turned around. Um, he, uh, as you can see, he loves the horses um, and and the animals as well. There's our stupid smelly bloodhound. Um, so he loves feeding the horses and um, and turning them out. Um, he's lost about thirty five pounds since working with oh, us, wow. uh. um, which is is just huge, um, and. And he's wicked funny. And um, he's not been able to teach me to juggle. <laughs> but that's what we do over lunchtime a lot of time is we work on my terrible juggling skills with his really good ones. Um, and this is him helping out on play dates. Um, that's him running there in the background. We were playing, I think we were playing Simon Says at that point. It might have been Sharks and Minnows. Um, so as you can see, he's 100% part of the gig, um, loves singing and dancing. And um, we're trying to get him to write out some songs so that, uh, so that we're developing his, his written skills. But um, I didn't do any of that in a reggae voice. I suck. Um, it's all right. We can we can do it in a ragamuffin style, you know. We can, uh, we can. Yeah. Uh, how do I? Where is everyone now? Um. 
So, sorry, I've lost everything. Well, we can um, all see you. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just sit here in the dark. It seems right. Um, <clears throat> there we go. So what can I tell you guys about the job program? It's of all the work we've done, I can honestly, without a doubt, say that this is probably the most important work we've done. Um, and uh, um, it's been really through the mentorship of, of working with David Doyle to um, to now see how we can we can grow this into um, living facilities um, because housing is the most pressing issue next to to jobs. Um, how we did it here is uh, I don't want to get really stuck in the woods of the um, of, of the politics and the the machinations that we went through but we teamed up with the organization that uh that that creates funding sources for people with developmental disabilities and we actually wrote this program with them so that they pay us to provide the job and provide the supervision and then the agency actually pays a living wage um, uh, our interns make 18 dollars an hour the original contract was that people would serve in the internship for six months, um, but we've been able to show so much progress and um, so much engagement um, that we've been able to renew those contracts for six months at a time. Um, and some of our some of our interns are going on their third or fourth iteration. Uh, the big question is what happens after this. So I reached out to two other uh, therapeutic riding programs in the area. I told them about this program. I got them to develop internships with the, the people that they were finding in the same position. And our goal is to then start trading interns around between the three um, programs so that we can, we can send people to a new environment that's still gonna be supportive and people are gonna go in with some skills uh, and, and feel like they already have a value to, to add so that their world naturally just gets bigger and bigger. And that we keep people in a supportive environment where they're still getting paid um, so that we can, we, can, we can help them kind of move out into the larger world. So we're really excited about that. And that was something I was really proud of. And the two other therapeutic writing programs were actually really excited um, to be able to offer something. So their programs aren't as fully fledged as ours yet, um, but telling the funding source that we're working on this actually kept them um, continuing to, uh, to uh, re-up these, these six month internships for our, for our participants. Um, uh, we have uh, one young man who is not interested in, um, in, in cleaning up after horses. And so he took over our bookkeeping and he's slaying it. And um, Rupert, you probably know who that is and he loves to be in everybody's I business. So to be able I to send exactly them a bill, yeah, yes. made him pretty stoked about it. Does, and he, also does, he, know... does he go after people for the money as well? Oh yeah, like, oh yeah. Does he do the follow-up oh, yeah. calls? He right? it, it will not it. calls, but emails, and he's okay. written some pretty strongly worded <laughs> emails. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Which I'm sure they're thrilled to have the email version because he's six foot eight. And yeah. if he comes after you for money, I imagine it would be a little intimidating. Yeah. So um, uh, um, it is, and I think David will attest to this, this is, it's some of the most important work ever to give someone work that is meaningful with dignity and regularity. Um, I will add that um, just as a testament to how critical this is, we are experiencing 100 year storms in coastal California right now. The farm where we're at in Half Moon Bay is on a canyon road. The canyon road completely crumbled into a sinkhole this week um, and we're not able to get interns here. Um, the amount of uh, disruption that's happened in our interns' lives is tremendous. And we're now trying to reroute transportation where it's going to take 
uh, where people had a 20 minute commute to get here before. It's now gonna take them an hour and a half to get here and everybody's willing to do it because it's so critical to people's well-being to have this regular schedule, to have work. And they're really concerned about the horses, um, which tells us everything that we need to know, um, that the engagement is there um, and the camaraderie. So um, because we can't get to everybody, <laughs> Uh, on Friday night, we're going to have, we've rented a karaoke room for everybody and we're all going to get together and sing and dance the night away on, uh, on Friday night, um, which is a whole lot style. better than, yeah. the, there you go, there you go. It's a whole lot better than the uh, disco bowling option. Um, I'm thrilled with the karaoke version. So if I could, um, let me just open it up to questions. So and, and I want you to know that this isn't the end of the conversation. Uh, you know, I will make my email available to all of you. I will, I will slay you with uh, copies of grant proposals that I wrote for this program, um, budgets. Um, and of course, you're certainly willing or, or, or able to use the testimonials that we've gotten from families um, to help grow your program. So what can I do to help? Can I, can I kick off with the first question? Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so um, you said in in a a, a two line and throwaway, we teamed up with the organisation that does the funding for this kind of thing. There's a backstory. How did you do that? Um, so in California, we have what we call regional centres, which I think is a little bit similar to uh, what David's got going in Ireland with St. Joseph's Foundation, where you have one funding source that's going to bring together government money for people with lifelong disabilities. Uh, in California, they're called regional centers. Um, the regional center had a job training program that was stupid. Um, it teamed up people to have jobs and have a full-time job supervisor who was generally a young person being paid not very much money and to hang over that person's shoulder while they were doing their job under the auspices of supporting them. And so what happened is you either had somebody who was on their phone the whole time because they were bored or there was someone who was really just demeaningly hanging over somebody's shoulder telling them what to do all the time. Um, a lot of those people got punched and rightly so. Um, and so the turnover in that job was huge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had seen it in our local coffee shop. It was horrible. And of course, most of those jobs were customer facing jobs, um, yeah. you know, or was, you know, folding sweaters at the Gap store. Um, what is different about our program is that we're, we have someone in an environment where they already feel able, where they already feel comfortable. And one of the first things we did is we put our interns in charge of the volunteers um, and it put them in a position of power, which was really, 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 really exciting. Um, and it didn't, didn't always work out, um, which was kind of fun. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, what's the top uh, story of, of it not working out just quickly? <laughs> uh, well, there were a few people that left and there were skid marks in their parking spots when they left. Um, <laughs> so, you know, flipping that power dynamic over from someone who has always felt like they were the client, they were the person being supervised, they were the person being talked down to and giving them the wand that says that they can go in and tell you know, some middle-aged woman that she's done a terrible job of cleaning the stall and she needs to do it again. <laughs> yeah. nice it's quite fun. It's really fun. And, um, and, and usually the arc of what happens is, is that that supervisor is quite cruel to start with. And if you listen to the words that they use, they're, they're parroting that being talked down to. Um, and if you let it go long enough, it always turns into kindness. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really beautiful, really, really, really beautiful. Now, not everybody wants to do that. We have a couple of people who really like to get their job done and, and be left alone. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, you, and just like all of us, you have people that 
on some days they want to be left alone and some days they want to they really want to work side by side with someone um so tuning into that and having having your own supervisory staff that has the skills to tune into the fact that people have different support needs um is 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 really where the magic sauce is um and we just did a two door two day horse boy training for staff we had a bunch of new staff that we realized hadn't been through the training and it was and even our existing staff having those couple of days to really register what our values are we've seen a, a really fantastic re-engagement of all of our senior staff and we actually had two members of our intern program take the training too and it was so beautiful to see our whole staff just be completely okay when you know one intern just like grabs a blanket and pulls it up over his head and starts snoring in the middle of the training um <laughs> And everybody was just cool about it, you know. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, um, so the funding portion. Uh, I sorry, Rupert. I realized that I hadn't answered your question. Um, we we basically sat down with them and rewrote that program, and they were very good about telling us what their budgets were, and um, and uh, and so we rewrote out a program whereby Square Peg Foundation would be um, paid a daily rate to provide jobs and supervision uh, for people. And then we had to go back in and renegotiate because we had a couple of people that really needed one-to-one -one supervision um, and, um, and renegotiate that rate for people with higher support needs. Um, so, and just so you know, so that rate, uh, that rate is, um, it's roughly about $150 a day per client. Um, and that's for a four hour or more shift. So um, conceivably I could hire someone uh, and that's a, that's a two to one supervision ratio. So I could hire someone who would net out to the organization about $600 a day um, to be a supervisor um, and, uh, and, and, and get the chores done for the day. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of how that works. Reading between the lines of what you're you're saying, is it would it be fair to say that these agencies have money that they need to spend yes. and they need to be yes. seen to spend it? So that if Not you approach only, them yeah. with the right uh, formula, they're actually quite relieved. That's 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 the perfect way to say it. And we we have the data that says the success rate on most of these programs is dismal. And we're able to show that we're we're bringing them a successful program, right? Um, and the, and so they're going to spend the money one way or another. They might as well spell it, spend it on a successful program. Got it. Yeah, that we've delivered to them, we've hand delivered. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of their footwork for them. And how long was the lead up? What from mm. from thought to execution with through the um, negotiation? About close to twenty. Um, close to, to 24 months. Okay, that's about what I would think would be yeah. reasonable. Two years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Hang on, guys, just a quick second. Hey, honey, yeah. Greg's calling me on the other line. Can you take it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. It's my son on the other yeah, line who never calls. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you can jolly well wait. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> <laughs> um, so what else can I tell you guys about what we're doing and how it's going? Uh, I have a, a something that I have want to know if this is the same that we're doing here as you're doing, Joelle. It's mm -hmm. Debbie. Can you see? Hi, me? Debbie. Oh. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay. So we've been doing this for about 10 years here. It's called Colorado Paid Work Experience mm -hmm. and adults with disabilities, intellectual disabilities mainly, come in two hours on Wednesday and two hours on Thursday mornings. And they come with different organizations. So there's two of them, one's unique services, and then they get these, these young adults out into the town 
And one of the places they come is for us. And so mm -hmm. they can get up to 120 hours of paid work experience. And it could mm -hmm. take two years to get it, you know, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. they come every week. But is that what you've done is you've you you have a square peg and then you also became like a program like unique services that you can hire these people well they are paid to come to you and then you get them the government funding is that what you're doing um close uh and 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 you know it's it's fantastic that you've been doing this for 10 years i i love that what I think the only thing that we did different, and 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 I'm mentioning it only because it was a major traction point for us, was we started with people who were families who were riding here regularly, and then um, and then we we worked to bring them on board as staff. So it wasn't just kind of a traveling, come in once a week with a group and do a bunch of work and and go. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the folks in this program are people who had already participated here, already had some buy-in, already knew the horses. And we said, well, now that you've ridden here for a while, how about if this becomes your job? What if this is the place that you go to work? And I think that was, and I'm going to use the wrong term here, Deb, and I don't, and I don't want it to, to underscore what you're doing because what you're doing is, is fabulous. But, um, but there was just, uh, there was a little more feeling like this really is my job and a little less objectifying than, you know, on Tuesdays we go to Square Peg and we clean the horse stalls. And on Wednesdays we go to the animal shelter and we take care of the dogs. Um, this is their job job. And it's something that they, um, they feel like they're, part of the staff. And I think that was a major, major traction point um, for um, just feeling like it's a real job because it is a real job. So where do you get the, the $300,000 in wages to pay them? So again, we went to our regional center and um, we worked out this program. They had a budget for something similar to like what you're talking about. And so it's actually an agency that pays the interns and we provide the job. Um, so okay. we were lucky in that. I did get some seed money. I did go out and, and fundraise. And again, I will, I will gladly share with you guys my, my grant proposal um, kind of template that I sent out for this. And you guys are, are welcome to use it pretty much. How much, how much did you raise through that? Um, as opposed to what you got from local government? I raised about $280,000. And that was mainly in um, hiring um, uh, supervisors and also just to pay for, again, it took me two years to get this done. So it was, it was, it was a lot of footwork. Yeah. Yeah. So about $280,000. And that 280000 is spent and gone? Or is that like a, 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 a bank of capital that you operate from that you keep replenishing? It's pretty much spent and gone. I mean, okay. it, it definitely added to our reserves a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but I would say I would say eighty percent of that was pretty much spent. spent Do you now gone. have to go out and get that again, or are you sustainable through um, the state now? We've got it to the sustainable point. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So that that kicked you off. That got you going. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the state yeah. came yeah. in, and okay, so you don't have this mm -hmm. hanging mm -hmm. on you that you have to raise that every year. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So with, um, you know, yes, it is sustainable at this point. So not only are our interns getting paid, but we're getting paid to provide that job, and we're getting paid to, and we've we've stabilized the staff. You know, we've 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 hired some really good people, um, and that's that's where it can get pricey, right? Is if you have this program going and then you lose a key staff member, um, uh, you know, it's gonna it's gonna take it's going to take time and it's going to take effort to to bring in a new staff member and in the meantime you know guess who's going to be supervising those jobs it's mm. probably going to be you yeah thank you yeah 
So Deb, tell me how many people come in um, on these days through this program? So right now on Wednesday, we have a supervisor comes in with three young men. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, a supervisor, a different supervisor comes in with two. And mm -hmm. then on that day, we have about 12 people in the barn because another organization with at risk youth come over mm -hmm. with those kids. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have a volunteer that helps me, but they, they come and they used to come like 10 years ago, there would be like 10, 10 that would come and they clean the two mini horses and it would take 10 of them an hour and they come with a supervisor and the same with the <laughs> next day six to ten of them but um and it's you know developed over the years but um and i see the same thing with their supervisors you know they don't teach them how to hold the rake they don't teach mm -hmm. them common knowledge skills like how to even sweep the floor by yourself and and sweep it into a dustbin and it's just like, I don't understand why they don't do that. It just, I just have to step in and, uh, <clears throat> you know. Well, I think, I think you do have to step in, Deb. Um, and, and so I guess, you know, to be very Rupert-esque in my um, challenge to you, what would that program look like if you had all the time and the money in the world? And, you know, spend a little time with that. Are those... The people who are coming in, can you kind of mother hen them and bring them into the fold and, you know, think of that person as an employee who has dignified, important work? Could you, if you had the funding, could you, could you, could you help that person have a job at your farm where they were there regularly, whether it's once a week or four days a week or who knows full time you know what would that look like and when you know that let me know and let's 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 figure it out and let's let's create those jobs but getting away from and 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 david you know let me know if if you agree on this getting away from this institutionalized bring people in to do busy work is mm -hmm. what we need to get away from this is how we grow this into out of the busy work, out of the performative, oh, look at me, I'm such a great coffee shop because I hire these people. And if I hear the term these people one more time, I'm just going to blow a gasket. Uh, the, the, the people that we're supporting um, are our people. They're not these people. And we got to change those words first um, and then create that community where our people feel welcomed and valued. And that's the point we have to start from. So Giddy, Henrik, did you guys have thoughts on that one? You've got your hand up. Yes, uh, Joel, hi. Thank you for your hi. information. <laughs> and I have my question is, uh, did you have to provide uh, proof of professional qualification for the government? You, you need some, um, some approvals from the government to do this job or you create this? Um, we created it and then they came out and inspected and we had to do you know a couple of things mostly around uh, what we call ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. So, you know, bathroom access, things like that. Um, uh, America isn't going to be as highly regulated as as Germany or or Ireland. Um, and I honestly, I wish there would have been more strict certifications. Um, but we're, you know, we're going into we're going into a space. We're leaders in this field, right? This, and I say we, meaning the, this greater we. Um, and uh, uh, I think that you'll find that the, the need is so big that we're able to, to write these programs. Yeah, that is, that is right. Uh, we need programs like this here. We have some mm -hmm. several programs, but they doesn't work very, very, very fine or very good. It is only for the organization, I think, 
sometimes yeah. or, or, is it for the, or is it for the people and they that is not so easy to come in but they know what the program is um, um, able, to, able to, to do and mm -hmm. but they, mm -hmm. they they cannot give us a chance yeah we, we have to fight for this I agree I agree a hundred percent agree and again I think the the most important first step is to It is everything we know about horse boy that we have to create that human and physical environment first and that human environment means it's we're not serving those people um we are all working together as us people and that 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 inclusiveness is the most important part the most successful part of the the this job training program that we've built and it's really exciting just to see where it's helped people. Um, it, it's not just the most important work we've ever done. I can honestly say it's the most gratifying work that we've done. Um, and so many families that we serve now that their, their young one in their family is 13, 14, 15, 16, they're already queued up. You know, when I turn 18, I'm gonna work here. And I said, good, because when you're 19, I need you to run the place because I want to go on vacation. Um, so yeah, so taking the families that you're already serving and starting to create that environment where um, where where the people that you're serving are becoming more and more and more and more important to what you're doing, so that they're they have an active part in 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 the success of of the organization. I have a, a another question about that, um, Joel. Oh, actually, first. Um to Henrik. Um, Henrik, do you have a local uh, funding source in Kaisvarendorf who you can approach even if it's not very good? Do you know who you would go to for this? Yes, of course. We so, have one or two uh, of them, but they're working not in the right way and they make their job and that the people are very unhappy there do you think that it could be helpful if we brought made a proposal based on what joel has done and some of the other people here um and then we go to them and then in with that in typical german fashion they would say no two times maybe three and then on the fourth time they would have to say yes um but to say this is the program look this is working this is working this is working this is working this is the program do you think it might be helpful to put something together and go and make a presentation yes of course i think uh, if i can uh Tell about um, successful programs like Joel's in California or also the program from David I saw last year that makes uh, something easier uh, to come in the door. But then they have uh, also they are thinking, oh, we open this door, which door is now closed, and that is they have 1,600 disabled people in this organization. They are working outside, some of them, the most uh, working inside and make some little things they can do. And that all the people they are working there, the disabled people are unhappy. And uh, if you go there and you want to say, I have a nice, nice program here. And that is especially for autism people. The autism people in this, um, uh, organization here are the unhappiest people there yeah if you are not so good in thinking or you are disabled with your body that is okay they can work there sometimes they're happy sometimes they're but happy. the autistic especially this young um, they have many problems there and they have no uh, help us there they have no 
um, alternatives. And that is what I think David's place put here in Germany with the ideas and experience from Joel, we can create some new. And for this, I, I have one, two meet, uh, one or two meetings with uh, um, parents. They have also this young autistic people and they uh, have to help us. Okay. And then it's just nice to have some examples. Yes, of course. I want. I wonder if you know, Joel, if you were to come over again to Germany, maybe you know, an in-person visit might not be a bad idea. Maybe I'd love that, I Mr. Doyle, yeah. to join on that one, perhaps. Mr. Doyle's got his hand up too. Um, hi, Joel. <laughs> How are you? Hi, yeah. David. Good. I look. First of all, just to say, um, I was over in Joel's place on. May was it last year? Was it or did, was it? Yeah, May. And I May or June? Yeah. Or June, yeah. I can't remember what it was, but I suppose you know we're here talking about money. We're talking about you know jobs and all that. But the one thing that really stood out: everyone was so happy. Everybody was smiling. You know that was be it staff or be it the service users or students. They were so happy, and I suppose that's the most important things for you know. See people that are there; they're really really happy. You know so fair juice to enjoy whatever um you know kind of a, a, an atmosphere you have there it's just i don't know how we battle that and bring it over because that really makes such a difference especially when you're coming to funding um from debbie just to go back to debbie's point and about the the funding and about programs and about people coming and they just um oh they're coming and just bringing people to clean horses but not showing them how to do it or and things like that i think there's an onus on us a bit there um, you know, that we don't get quantitative rather than qualitative, so that when people come into our centre or any of our centres within, within horse by any centre, that we, um, you know, remain qualitative rather than quantitative. So I think, as Hendrik said, we should develop some sort of programme when they are coming in that we're able to hand them a programme. We, over here in Ireland, we have VTAC Level 5. Um, and that's the recognised programme from SANIS or um, uh, ETBs, that's the, that's the one the, the award goes to. A lot of our people aren't able to, um, I suppose, to come to that high standard, okay, that's been put, putting it bluntly. Um, so we rewrote the, the, that and we put it down to a, a level three. And we send that into for an award for from from the FETEC people and um, for accreditation. That's still gone in there. We haven't received anything for two years uh, on it, but they have allowed us to provide the program um, uh, and and award our own certificates for it. But I think from from Debbie's point of view, I think we need to do that. You know, and she had that program. I think I'm going to share it with some some of you, and that's bringing it down to how we you know. Um, recognize the different types of horses, their colors, their breeds, you know, the stables, we, and all different modules, the module on feed, straw, hay, nuts, oats, all the different, you know, enjoying our people when they come in, you know, and that's not by book, it's all by demonstration because a lot of our people learn from demonstrations. And I think if we are coming together, Rupert and Jeremy or something like that, that would be something that we should really follow to try that when we do go for funding, then we have to hand these to the uh, educational boards and we're able to say, okay, this is what we do. You right. know, because I think where we probably lack a small bit is that we don't, we have what we're going to do, but we actually don't have the, the course material, you know, yeah. and yeah. say, look, this is what they're going to achieve. You know, uh, yeah, no, I agree. I, and I, I think that this is partly because everyone has grown organically over the absolutely. last 20 well, years or so. And we're yeah. all now just at this point yes. where... Well, it's not, it's not a criticism. It's not a criticism no, at no, all. No, 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 I, I'm talking about trying to get money. <laughs> exactly. This is, this is the, logical, it's the logical next point, David. You're, you're yeah. quite right. And I think what, what, what organisations need is to be spoon fed. They, they need us to come in 100%. with this, you know, there it is. It's a PDF. Yeah. that's the program yeah. um and then one can iron out the bureaucratic details of well your state does it a bit like this or ireland does it a bit like that or italy does it a bit like this but basically it will be the same it will follow a very similar 
yeah. thing. Um, and then if we can show that it's happening in multiple countries, if they say, well, you know, we don't do that here in, you know, <laughs> County Durham, you say, well, OK, no problem, because, you know, over there. Um, and there and there and there and there. So I presume County Durham, mm -hmm. you know, you're intelligent chaps. You could probably, you know, uh, but we need to spoon feed it to them. And I think mm -hmm. that yeah, the, yeah. the more of yeah, these yeah. precedents we have and that you just hand them this PDF and say it's there. It's easy to understand. It's it's all yeah. laid out rather briefly in bullet points so that they don't get lost in the bump. Yeah. Um, we, often, we often say, you know, when for Caroline, we all know, you all know about Caroline, but Caroline's day is as good as bad as the carer that comes in with to her, that works with her for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have the carer or whoever comes in with her, and if they're motivated to teach and, you know, and, uh, you know, Karen would have a good day, you know what I mean? Or if they're coming in good form, or if the carer comes in bad form, Karen's going to have a bad day. You know what I mean? And that's so if I think that's why it's important that we have the, the documentation to hand to these people when they come in and say, this is what you're doing today, you know, and, and, mm -hmm over three months and four months that we manage it and we you know, give them accreditation for it. Hopefully the ETB will accept all this, but it's just taking a bit longer. Having said that, they are putting it into our modules, you know, the level five module in disability that we yeah. run in Medics College. So we run um, uh, 16 um, uh, students uh, that come in to want to work in disabilities. Run, and uh, we get funded by the state. Uh, so we have a module at Horse Boy now that we put in there. So they accept that, you know, that we give them a demonstration what what what, what Horse Boy is about, and they're funding that within that course. And I don't know, it's Bianca one, but she'll be addressing them when she comes over in in in, the, in January. Um, the other, I suppose, the last thing from my point of view is, you know, about funding is, um, you know. We kind of we we sell ourselves short an awful lot of times um, in the, the work that you do um, and how good it is, and we kind of go looking for money, um, thinking that we're kind of begging, but actually we're there to to, to solve problems with these people. Uh, when you came over in December, Rupert, like we were, we were setting up a new a new agent and a new place, um, and two point seven million we got for it, but it was unspent money in the government last year. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that we didn't have to go fighting for new money or anything like that. The disability had 32,000 unspent last year, 32 million unspent last year. They never spent it. Mental health had something like 40. You know what I mean like that? So it's So we need to show money. them how to spend it. It's 100%, mm -hmm. but we need to spend it for them. Their problem is <clears> they have no one there. They have no one there to do it. You know what I mean? They have no one that yeah. they, and that's not- You're talking about staffing problems. They have staffing problems. That's they a whole other can of worms, the yeah. That are there yeah. don't have the skill set to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So when we go to get it, and no matter whether you're in Ireland, England, wherever, and and Henrik, we'll be talking to Henrik there all as, as well about this, you know, but um, it's about, we're going to solve their problems because I can guarantee you they're mm -hmm. inundated with complaints from people and families with disabilities not getting services. And here, and that's what I like about Joel and the American system, the way you're, you know, accepted now for the insurance, you know, yeah. where you can actually get money through insurance. And I think that we, I'm certainly following that. And we were talking to Sammy here about that today, you know, that or VHI and or who are the insurance companies here, you know, that you can get 12 sessions or something like that under for heart by sessions for under the insurance. This um, helped yeah. us actually here in Germany because when yeah. Joel got, this is crazy because horse boy is the <laughs> farthest thing away from ABA that it yeah. could possibly be. Yeah. But because God is great, um, uh, Joel happens to know a BCBA, a board certified ABA guy who runs a, uh, a, an ABA program who liked what we did and said, Rupert, that's, ABA just by another name I'm like absolutely not no it isn't blah, blah, blah. I said no it is and no, it isn't. I said well look it doesn't matter if you think it's ABA would you yeah. sign off on that as yeah. ABA and he said absolutely mm -hmm. and so because of this um Joelle jumping through many hoops it's oversimplification she, she really uh had to bust her ass for this one but she got it to the point where um certain insurances would then pay for yeah. you called it Trojan horse boy um, and um, 
and movement method as well. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting American families who are at the American base here in Wiesbaden in Germany, mm -hmm. who had these same insurances who could then get refunded for the, for the services that they were getting from us in Germany, which is really interesting. Um, they had to front it. Um, they wouldn't get uh, paid immediately, but we, we basically we wouldn't get paid. They had to pay us in front of it, but nonetheless, it was better than a kick in the face. So we're definitely moving towards yes. these things from having started very much on the hippie outlying margins. Um, and a lot of this has been pioneered by, um, by Joelle um, and those around her because Joelle does have a direct line to God. Um, no. So th th there's somebody here who's who's sitting rather stealthily who hasn't it's right below me, but she probably might be somewhere else in. But that's Kim here from Bramblewood in South Carolina. Kim, I know that you we, we only recently met um, just um, so that you all know her. She she came and so did Robin um, down there on the left hand corner on a recent webinar that we did a week or two ago, um, which is just outlining um, what the programs of NTLS are, you know, horse boy movement method and Athena. And um, it turns out that she's running this place, Bramblewood in South Carolina, that is almost entirely now staffed by people on the autism spectrum, young adults, and has also come to it. Do you want to just talk us through that a little bit, Kim? I do, and I'm going to have to cut out of here in just a minute because I have to run to an, another meeting. But um, we changed so much about our program from going from a traditional riding school. And then 10 years ago, we were like, we want to go in what looks like a therapeutic route, but we don't like what's out there. As far as therapy goes, we want to stay as far away from clinical anything that we possibly can. Um, so in by making this environment where so many people can come together that looked like a traditional riding school on the outside, at some point, about two or three years into the shift, we realized that about 60 to 80 percent of our of our people who were just coming here for regular riding lessons were autistic. And we made a point within the staff at the time that we are never going to make anybody feel like they're here for therapy and we're never going to make anybody feel like an outsider. And that was just because this was the environment we wanted to create. And so when it came to the staff that we have now, it was more or less desperation, trying to find people who will work within the horse industry, trying to find people who were okay with the realistic day-to-day -day of it. And I had so many volunteers that were autistic and they are here, they're here with me every day. They're members of my extended family and my community. And because they were coming out of high school at the time, and I think of two in particular that's with me right now, they were coming out of high school and I just, I had blinders on. They were my kids that I loved, but I never thought of them as the kids who could actually run the show in so many ways. And there's a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm running into, I'm day to day here. I'm at the farm 24 seven. I love my life. It's a life I don't need to escape from or, or leave much, but um, I'm working now to create a better structure of supervision. So I'm not the only one. And um, we've got a great staff. I love everybody. Um, I've never had a staff like we have now that are so deeply involved with understanding the nuances of the horses and able to alert me of, you know, the tiniest thing that, that's going to happen um, that I need to be looking out for. They can sense it before I do. But um it was mainly desperation that brought us here, but we had done a lot of legwork creating a traditional riding school that no one was ever placed in a role of being the outsider within our structure. Got it. How did you get your funding um, to pay these people? Is it just purely out of the business or do you get state funding? Just operations. Okay. We're just we're now like I, I've had three shells of nonprofits sitting there, but I want to retain ownership of what we do so greatly as we have, like as, as we go into a greater role of being able to be more vocal. We're located right beside Tryon, North Carolina. So we're in the seat of the American traditional hunter jumper world. And now those farms are seeking me out for what doing a little bit more of what we do here, going into those farms and doing clinics. And as this greater shift is happening within the horse world and people are opening up to, to different experiences, 
Um, now is when we're going to be looking at staying as a corporation, and I want to remain a corporation and not a nonprofit, but to take advantage of the nonprofits around me that are funded um, through, I think the, we're about, I think it's a $3 billion, $3 billion of money that is, that's hitting the U.S. right now um, in a very vague umbrella of um, money to combat the opioid crisis. And so these states are about to be flooded with all these funds. And we have a lot of contacts within hospital systems. And we bring in um, doctors of, like student doctors of integrative medicine to come and just explore what we do here through the medical school in South Carolina. I am much more comfortable now with the direction we wanna go by remaining a corporation but taking advantage of all the money that's flooding the nonprofits around us that are just sitting there like, what are we going to do with these funds? So I'm, I'm really glad to, I didn't think about going outside of our normal operations for funding until sitting here today. Well, something which you might want to think about, Kim, is when we, when we were doing Horseboy in the U.S. primarily, we were always had two parallel streams. We were always Horseboy LLC and we were always Horseboy Foundation. And those are two different income streams. And, you know, so if we wanted to raise money to subsidize services for low income um, clients or whatever we wanted to do or build infrastructure or hire people, we could do that through fundraising through the foundation. And, you know, if we were teaching people dressage or they were coming to do horseboy courses or whatever, that would generally go through the LLC. And we felt that we found that was a very natural way to go. So I don't think you have to worry about, um, any sort of loss of control. The only thing, as you know, probably, or if you don't know, you need to know, um, but I'm sure you do, is <laughs> minimize your board. <laughs> I look at the boards I would have ended up with in the two incarnations that we were looking at. And I think that we have just a much more pure, compassionate community around us now that truly sees our goals and our right. mission and, and are in line with that. But I'm so glad we haven't done it until now because yeah. we would have probably ended up with a disaster. But and there are some there are some pitfalls that. which I'm sure any of us would, you know, happily steer you around. You know, do feel free to reach out to us about how you set up a board so that you basically don't get voted off it. You know, um, so yeah, um, it's happened to people I know, um, but it, it doesn't need to. Um, and if you people that want to make their boards very big, generally what I'd say is no, don't do that keep your board minimal but make your advisory board as big as you want um because really that's what you want those other people for is is either to help you fundraise or to give you good ideas or lend you somehow their heavy artillery whether it's their name whether it's their funds whether it's their buddies who can fund whatever it is um uh, but the board itself keep it minimal but you can absolutely do this parallel thing. And if, if there is this state funding coming in, Joel, that, that, that um, opioid um, epidemic funding, is that something you can look to? We haven't seen a lot of that, but we, we brought on a contract with San Mateo County Mental Health. Um, and we're seeing um, kind of like what David was saying, a bunch of, they get to the end of the year and they say, we have these unspent funds, you know, can you help us? And David, to your point, um, I, I agree so much that uh, if I could do things over, you're right, I think we do sell ourselves short. And so when we think about what these budgets are, when, you know, um, so for example, um, and, and Kim, to your point about this, this, these unspent funds and these monies in, in mental health, you know, as, as the states and the counties are, are a little flush with cash right now. Um, they, San Mateo County Mental Health came to us and they said, um, let's do a grant for you for staff development for the next two years. So tell us how you would spend $100,000 to support your staff in, in the next two years. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. Um, and so, and we did. 
and um and you know and uh uh it took us about four months to work that out with them to you know we would we would put in a budget for x y and z and um and we negotiated back and forth and we got it and so for the first time in you know 20 years of existence we have we have money to spend on staff development and that's how we sent becca out to you, uh, okay. Rupert, and um, yeah, it. and uh, um, and now we have another staff member that is very jealous that Becca got to come, and he's making a lot of noise. So, you know, it was it was uh, uh, to your point, Kim. Uh, you know, I hadn't asked before for those funds, and and then we started doing it, and and they they are there. And so but perhaps now you should go and ask for three hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, because you usually get half of what you ask for anyway. Exactly. So, um, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of the American math that I come across. But uh, Henrik, to your um, uh, I, I mean, the answer is absolutely 100 percent. I'll come out and make a presentation. Um, you know, any excuse to come out and spend time with you guys uh, makes me happy. But two things we did. Um, that that I think speak to David's point is that for each of our interns, we had a very specific um, uh, uh, a plan for them for those six months with specific goals. And as long as we were meeting those goals, we found that the agencies were were willing to to re up that and um, think a lot about how you word those goals, um, because nobody else is doing a really thoughtful job of it. Um, and, 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 and in doing that, we're able to prove that this is a successful program. So it's no longer just, well, everybody seems really happy. So obviously it's successful and he doesn't want to leave the program. So we need you to re up this, uh, uh, you know, this, this internship. Um, so writing out those goals and, and then being able to show that you're consistently meeting those goals was really a key to keeping the funding going. Um, and I think the other thing is, and this 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 is to 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 David's point, is being able to find and and hire and train the right employees. And the horse boy one and two training um, has been invaluable in that it is just such a great benchmark. Um, in fact, at this last training, it was very clear that one person just was never going to get it. And when I met with her to fire her uh, two days after the training, um, what she told me was when she listened to the training, how much she realized that she didn't have any skills in self-advocacy. I mean, even though I still let her go, the training meant a lot to her. So it's, it's good stuff. It's a really, really, and I'm so glad, David, that you're using that in your, your level five class, because it's, it's just a really valuable tool that we should all use, use more, uh, whether we're evaluating or hiring or training staff. Um, and Kim, um, you know, get down with it, because you're going to bring your, <clears throat> your people, I think she's left, <laughs> who are on the spectrum. <laughs> uh you know um anyway doesn't matter she's not here but uh how exciting i would love to know more about her program and um right I, i've just been in contact like. with her the last couple of days and i think in the fall i'm going to try and head down there to do a um a couple of trainings um so maybe you want to join me joelle and you know i love that yeah, yeah. well and i'm i'm surprised that uh kristen um, at Equestrian Chaos isn't in on this. She seemed really excited. She sent me a couple of notes um, about a job training program. Um, so I'll I'll send her all the stuff that we. Yeah, please do. You never her. know; something might have come up for her. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we can we can loop that into a to a. I think particularly uh, if, if you guys don't know Equestrian Chaos, um, you should look them up online. Um, this is a program out of uh, Mobile, Alabama. And they are trick riders and mounted archers, but they're so good, their team, they get booked, they travel the USA um, doing shows everywhere. But, and they have a special needs program and they get special needs people doing this. And I went to visit them and they got scub up trick riding. And these are girls like hanging under horses, you know, accurately firing yeah. arrows at things. 
um so badass doesn't cover it and they and they and they have a special needs and they're roman riding they're standing up on the horses and do it. it's 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 bananas and they can do it um so in terms of sort of a gold standard they're another one um and i know that they um this is something you might want to i don't know if she's told you this but they might be you know losing their place and um oh no right so this kind of money these sorts of funding streams could be uh allow them to go and get themselves somewhere permanent um yeah. because they, they, they've had a good philanthropist but he's he's now dying and the daughter is not good and blah 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 and you know so they're in that transitional point um but guys look up equestrian chaos because it's a really good benchmark for what is possible um you know we thought horse boy we were really cool for cantering around with kids in front of us and then i saw what they were doing it's like okay we suck yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you know when they do demos and they bring in their their learners the people they're supporting in the program their mm -hmm. special needs riders it's never oh and here comes clayton and he this and this and this they say this is how we train horses and riders and 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 yeah. and the people become part of the show but they're never objectified as yeah. as the person um that they're supporting they're they're just a part of the show and um it was really beautiful to behold how skillfully they navigated that. And it wasn't even skillful to them. It was natural to them. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, I, th I think that's, that it, that's it impressive. for the best people. Um, something yeah. else that happened with that same group. So that group, do, they do a lot of Renaissance fairs in, in America. And if, you, if you're not American, you don't know what a Renaissance fair is. It's, it's, a, it's a whole industry in America of um, effectively medieval outdoor markets um with acts you know so there'll be falconry there'll be jousting there'll be that sort of thing and there's no big city in america that doesn't have at least one or two permanent ren fairs that happen um you know for several weeks a year and um it's, it's it's quite a big money maker and when you go to them you realize very quickly ah a lot of the people who come to these things and work at these things are on the autism spectrum and um it, it's sort of a natural nerd you know uh, focal point and there's a whole career there there's a whole romantic life people meet get married and and, and it's a self-contained economic you know universe which is quite fun um, and whimsical and imaginative and um, so through equestrian chaos um, they approached me to do this new um, ren fair that was happening in Biloxi Mississippi um, to do it as movement method style so of course i agreed and then promptly ducked out so i could go to ireland and dumped uh joelle and bianca who's not on this call because she's down with alex in uh <laughs> in uh the um black forest right now and they held that thing up um and that i think you might i just read your your unfinished blog on that joelle that you ended up with 700 kids that you had to yeah take through educational modules in costume on yeah. on that one day so i want yeah. you to, i want you to finish that blog please um even if you even because it's long i can tell <laughs> cut it into like three or four pieces and just yeah. put it up there on the website because i think we all want to see what you did and how you managed those numbers because that was crazy it was yeah it, it was bianca it was it was crazy yeah so i will work on that it's, i don't know how you did it yeah yeah, I don't either, but I'm so glad we did. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, has anyone got any more questions that they want to ask Joelle? Anything that they want to share? I do. Uh, so Joelle, are your mm -hmm. interns uh, called participants or are they called employees because as a path international center you can't ask volunteers to disclose their disabilities but if we take in people in the program that have disabilities and their participants we have to have a whole medical thing signed off by the doctor make sure you know if they're in our care and there's no parents here they go into a seizure or something we already know their medical history so like people that come into our barn with the supervisors 
I'm not allowed to ask them anything about, like I'm never allowed to know their disabilities or ask right. them. All right. I can say is, would you have any trouble doing a job like this? You know? Right. right. No, it's a great question, Deb. And I, I, yeah, it's a fabulous question. I think it speaks to, to Henrik, what you were talking about of, of how we integrate this and how we make sure that we're qualified. Um, so uh, with our program, the term intern is pretty specific um, so that we bridge that gap so that we do have access. And remember, you know, we've got this unique situation um, for us that I think you may have as well, um, that most of our interns are people who have participated as, as writers in our program. So not only do we have that information, we also have a relationship with the families. So, you know, seizures are a big thing in this population. And, um, you know, and we needed to make sure that uh, we had qualified staff and that we, we knew how to recognize the seizure and that we could, you know, um, very quickly communicate with family members if there was a, um, a seizure. One of our guys, in fact, the one in the video uh, was on a very, very, very strict diet. Um, and we thought it was behavioral or something. And then we found out that his mom just wanted him to lose weight. Well, the problem was he just kept, he kept breaking into everybody's lunch and eating everybody's food because he was hungry. <laughs> and so we didn't know, oh my God, does he have a peanut allergy? You know, and because he just really woofed down somebody's peanut butter sandwich. Um, and uh, so, uh, so that was a tricky, <laughs> that was a, that was a tricky, a tricky bit. Um, and uh, he ate a whole lot of ice cream sandwiches you know, over the period of a couple of days that belonged to our landlord. <laughs> and if you knew, if you knew Joel's landlord, you would know the humor of that. Yeah. Um, we also had a young woman who showed up with, you know, three white claws in her lunch and, um, you know, and, and, and being able to giggle through that with the family, you know, and call mom and say, uh, uh, you know, and we said, Hey, you know, she's got, three white claws in her lunch and she was already to the bottom of one white claw what? is like a um it's like a it's like a wine cooler made with vodka <laughs> <laughs> and so share? so i called mom and he, well yes but not willingly um so she uh you know we we're like oh hey what's that and and she laughed and she says i only brought three i don't want to get too drunk and we said, yeah. So, uh, so anyway, so I called mom and mom says, well, just so you know, she, she must have just picked those up in the garage, you know, instead of her juice box or something. She doesn't know what they are. And I said, no, actually, she said she only brought three. She didn't want to get too drunk. So yes, yeah, she knew exactly what they were. Um, and she says, well, what did you do with them? And I said, well, we confiscated them and, and, and then we, we drank them after five. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're going to have tricky days. And yeah. so, Deb, I, obviously I was telling a funny story because it was funny, but um, <laughs> but I think what it is, is it's a cautionary tale about, um, you know, knew, knowing who the people you are that you're supporting and having a relationship with the family mm. so that um, you have, that you are mindfully able to um, manage that health and disability data. Mm. Um, in a way that's that's dignified, but also also sets people up for success, so that mm. you don't have a health problem that you you're not prepared to deal with. Mm. Joelle, so basically, mm -hmm. you're saying that they're participants first, so you already know their medical history, and then they become that's interns, correct. and you're not allowed mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. it. But if you're supervising, you'd almost have to know it. If they yes. come with their own yeah. supervisors. You're not allowed to know. So yes, yes, and that makes uh, you know that makes the point. And I, I think both you and and Henrik um, pointed out, um, and and David too, that these these companies, as it were, that um, provide you know uh, uh, outings and community integration for people with developmental disabilities. Um, you know, it kind of starts to look like a, a sweatshop. Um, and, 
getting away from that model. We know that model only goes so far. And it's like Henrik was saying, you know, these are, these are some pretty unhappy people. They are mm -hmm. underemployed and, um, and bringing them into a fold. So, you know, if this person were your employee and they had a seizure condition, you would need to know, mm -hmm. right? So if you're paying them, that relationship has changed as opposed to, like you said, if they're a volunteer and you're a PATH certified place, that, you know, that's HIPAA information. That's, that's none of your business. But if they're an employee, that's information you need to know to, to be able to help that person in time of a crisis. So having, having our interns actually be our interns gives us the ability to have and manage that data because um, it's important especially if someone's going to be with you 20 hours a week, you need to be able to help support their, their health yeah. needs. Yeah, you do. It's and we, we went through, we went through so many uh, of those sorts of things at new trails, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, people not <laughs> disclosing um, and finding people unconscious in the field, you know, with horses standing over them and that sort of thing. And yeah, we, every, I think. Are you joking? <laughs> no, Is that a joke? No, no, God, no, no, no. Oh people gosh. keeling off horses into our arms. People, you know, so many undisclosed medical conditions. And then we realized that we had to, we had to radically, radically change the, uh, the um, application for people that came in as working students, volunteers, da, 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 da. Cause you know, also that's, this is Texas, right? So 40 degrees of heat, um, mm -hmm. digging fence post holes. Oh, um, you know, I mean, it just, it, it kills people. Um, and if, if, if you don't know what's up with them, uh, you, you you don't know even if you even if you put them on very light duties um and they're coming off a plane from the netherlands or or, whatever, or canada or whatever you know so no no you you want to know you absolutely want to know and you want to set it up so that as as joel says it's about setting people up for success um so listen guys i think we need to to get close to wrapping here um <laughs> but there's something i want to alert you all to which is very um uh, uh, timely that Deb is on the call. We are going to do a tribe day, and we're going to do it in Coral, and we're going to do it at Deb's in August, in late nice. August, right? So you guys are all the first we've told because we only chatted to Deb about it last night, hoping that she would say yes. <laughs> and, uh, she did, which is great. Um, so we're going to announce it to everybody, but it's at the end of August, chaps. Um, so uh, August 25th to 26th and 27th. And so uh, put Greeley, Colorado, near Fort Collins. Um, just put that on your radar if you fancy having some fun. And then we're going to get whoever shows up. What we tend to do at Tribe Days, if you haven't been to a Tribe Day, is um, we ask people to pres give presentations, horseboy people to give presentations on what they've been up to. And um, we have several days to all hang out and learn new things. Um, so some people are you know, going to just give us updates of where their programs are. Some people are going to give us new neuroscience that they've figured out, blah, 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 blah. We might have a beer or two. Um, there might be music. There might be campfires. It might possibly be fun. But in general, in, um, in Horse Boy, as you know, fun is verboten. Um, so if you have fun, you have to sneak it, you know, obviously around the back. Um, but put it on your radar. Um, there are worse places to be than Colorado in August. Yeah. Oh, Rupert, I forgot to mention that we have uh, axe throwing and knife throwing and a shooting range. So. Oh, like kind of fantastic! Too. And a, and a, I thought you were going to say that dirt, we have an axe murderer in the vicinity, in the neighborhood who. And a dirt bike trail. Okay. Dirt bike Just add alcohol, <laughs> right? Fantastic! What? Could go right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, brilliant, brilliant, Perfect. brilliant. Perfect. Okay, yeah. So I think we're all booking our plane tickets now. Um, <laughs> and and then is it is it possible if some of us want to camp? there on the site, um, Deb, rather than stay in local hotels. Yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. And, right. you know, we could uh, even set up one of those big tents for the shade and stuff too. Mm, super. Deb, Mike, off Colorado, we can stop. Super, okay, good. All right, so just heads up guys, and we'll, we'll, we'll send out some more you know, details about that um, in the next few. 
All right. All right. All right. So I think I think is Ileana's looking at me meaningfully. She's just there. <laughs> Can't see her, but I'm getting one of those looks like. So I think that means that it's time to. <laughs> she says that's not true, apparently. Well, totally giving me that look. Um, so um, let's 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 wrap. Um, but I've actually got various questions. I'm I'm going to be in contact, obviously, Joel. I want there's things I want to ask. Um, and I, I think what we might want to do is obviously with David and anyone else who's doing it, create this template that we could give people to go into local authorities with and say, we know you have money to spend. We know you have money you need to spend. We are coming here to solve your problem. And um, if you say no, we'll set David on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to need Ileana to come and help. Oh no, it's it's there, isn't it? In the bottom bit where it says leave. Is that is that is that, no? Oh, it's the wrong computer. You see. I, I, that. So thank, thank you, you everybody for coming, Joel. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone Bye. for coming on. Okay. Till next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.